Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate Good Friday. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollitt. O God, who by the passion of Christ your Son, our Lord, abolished the death inherited from ancient sin by every succeeding generation, grant that just as being conformed to him, we have been born by the law of nature, the image of the man of earth, so by the sanctification of grace, we may bear the image of the man of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Behold, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up and shall be very high. And many were astonished at him. His appearance was so marred beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of the sons of men so shall he startle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which has not been told them, they shall see. For that which they have not heard, they shall understand. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or comeliness that we should look at him, and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquities. Upon him was this chastisement that has made us whole and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray and we have turned every one to his own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, and he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, and as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people, and they made his grave with the wicked, and with a rich man in his death, although he had done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When he makes himself an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring, he shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the fruit of the travail of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul to death, and was numbered with the transgressors, yet he bore the sin of many, 
and made intercession for the transgressors. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, set me free. Into your hands I commend my spirit. You will redeem me, O Lord, O O faithful God. Father, into into your hands hands I commit commit my my spirit. spirit. Because of all my foes, I have become a reproach, an object of scorn to my neighbors, and of fear to my friends. Those who see me in the street flee from me. I am forgotten like someone dead, and have become like a broken vessel. Father, Father, into into your your hands hands I I commit commit my my spirit. But as for me, I trust you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My lot is in your hands. Deliver me from the hands of my enemies and from those who pursue me. Father, Father, into into your your hands hands I I commit commit my my spirit. spirit. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your merciful love. Be strong. Let your heart take courage, all who hope in the Lord. Father, Father, into into your your hands hands I commit commit my my spirit. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we have not a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sinning. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death, and he was heard for his godly fear. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Christ became obedient for us unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ According to John At that time, Jesus went forth with his disciples across the Kidron Valley, where there was a garden which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who had betrayed him, also knew the place, for Jesus Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas, procuring a band of soldiers and some officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, went there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to befall him, came forward and said to them, Whom do you seek? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When he said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, Whom do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he, so if you seek me, let these go. This was to fulfill the word which he had spoken. Of those whom you gave me, I lost not one. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it 
and struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword in its sheath. Shall I not drink the chalice which the Father has given me? So the band of soldiers and their captain and the officers of the Jews seized Jesus and bound him. First they led him to Annas, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had given counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. As this disciple was known to the high priest, he entered the court of the high priest along with Jesus, while Peter stood outside the door. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went in and spoke to the maid who kept the door, and brought Peter in. The maid who kept the door said to Peter, Are you not one of this man's disciples? He said, I am not. Now the servants and officers had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing and warming themselves. Peter also was with them, standing and warming himself. The high priest then questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered him, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all the Jews come together. I have said nothing secretly. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the officers standing by struck Jesus with his hand, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, bear witness to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? And thus then sent him bound to Caiaphas the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They said to him, Are not you also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, a kinsman of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Peter again denied it, and at once the cock crowed. Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the praetorium. It was early. They themselves did not enter the praetorium, so that they might not be defiled, but might eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered him, If this man were not an evildoer, we would not have handed him over. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. The Jews said to him, It's not lawful for us to put any man to death. This was to fulfill the word which Jesus had spoken, to show by what death he was to die. Pilate entered the praetorium again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own accord? Or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingship is not of this world. If my kingship were of this world, my servants would fight, that I might not be handed over to the Jews. But my kingship is not from the world. Pilate said to him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went out to the Jews and again and told them, I find no crime in him. But you have a custom that I should release one man for you at the Passover. Will you have me release for you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Then Pilate took Jesus and scourged him. 
And the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head and clothed him in a purple robe. They came up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, Behold, I am bringing him out to you, that you may know that I find no crime in him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no crime in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by that law he ought to die, because he's made himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard these words, he was even more afraid. He entered the praetorium again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, You will not speak to me. Do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me to you has the greater sin. Upon this, Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you're not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king sets himself against Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the pavement, and in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, Here is your king. They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and he went out, bearing his own cross, to the place called the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on other side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote a title and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this title, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. The chief priests of the Jews then said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but this man said I am the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and made four parts, one for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was without seam, woven from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let's not tear it, but cast lots to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture. They parted my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did this. But standing by the cross were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said, to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A bowl full of vinegar stood there, so they put a sponge full of the vinegar on hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit.
since it was the day of preparation, in order to prevent the bodies from remaining on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken, so that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first, and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth, that you may also believe. For these things took place that the scripture might be fulfilled. Not a bone of him shall be broken. And again, another scripture says, They shall look on him who they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly, for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus and Pilate gave him leave. So he came and took away his body. Nicodemus also, who had at first come to him by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pounds weight. They took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with the spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb where no one had ever been laid. So, because of the Jewish day of preparation, as the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. As we gather all around the world today to celebrate Good Friday, there are perhaps three words that can help us to understand something of the hope that today holds for us. They are compassion, solidarity, and accompaniment. The word compassion means to suffer with, solidarity to stand alongside, and accompaniment to journey with another. And I think we are invited to see this today on a number of different levels. Firstly, today each of us has chosen to stay close to Jesus as he suffers physical, emotional, and spiritual anguish, to stand with him in his suffering and to journey with him through it. Through our own personal prayer and fasting, and as we pray the liturgy of the Passion together, as we've just heard it read now, we are in some mysterious way compassionately present to Jesus as if we ourselves were actually there at Calvary. We are helpless to stop his anguish, but like Veronica and Simon of Cyrene, we walk the journey with him. Like Mary, his mother, John, and the faithful woman who stayed at the cross to be with him, we choose to stay with him so that he can look at us and draw strength from our love. And when he is taken down from the cross, we can be with Mary as she takes the broken body of her son into her arms for the last time. Secondly, Good Friday is also about the gift through the cross of knowing that Jesus stands with us and accompanies us on our own journey of suffering. Also, the Father who accompanied Jesus in his passion is one with us in our own passion. Whether we are grieving a, a loved one or going through a serious illness at this time or perhaps facing rejection or betrayal in a relationship or even failure, today we have the assurance that God chose to share our human suffering and that God in Christ stays close to us, accompanying us on that journey. Lastly, as we look around our world today, we see unimaginable suffering. 
the suffering of a world in which powerful regimes like the Taliban oppress the people and particularly the women of Afghanistan, the horror of war in places like Ethiopia and Ukraine, the devastating pain of leaving one's country for a refugee existence, grinding poverty and famine in many places, the suffering of rape, femicide and sexual abuse and of natural disasters caused by climate change. And so today we are invited to a compassionate solidarity with and accompaniment of those who suffer most. Above all, Good Friday is God's promise that God is with our world, even our cosmos, in and through all of our sufferings, including those caused by our own sinfulness. When we look at the horrors around us and cannot bear to watch the news sometimes because it is so distressing, our God does not look away. Good Friday shows that God, out of God's immense love for us, chooses to enter into human suffering and accompanies us in it. Not only on the cross 2,000 years ago, but every single day that we as human beings and as the creation experience suffering. And because we know that the agony of Good Friday is not the end for Jesus, we know that a door is opened for us too. That God's compassionate love also stands with us and accompanies us in the suffering in the world. The theologian Elizabeth Johnson says that it is as if by inhabiting the inside of the isolating shell of death, that Christ brings divine light into closest contact with disaster, setting up a gleam of light for all other creatures who suffer in the same annihilating darkness. In their suffering and dying, they are never left alone. The cross signals that God is present in the midst of anguish, bearing every creature and all creation forward, with an unimaginable promise. This is our faith and our hope and the reason we can truly call this Friday good. Let us pray, friends, for the Holy Church of God, that our God and Lord be pleased to give her peace to God and to unite her through the whole world, and to grant that leading our life in tranquility and quiet, we may glorify God, the Father Almighty. Almighty, ever-living God, who in Christ revealed your glory to all the nations, Watch over the works of your mercy that your church, spread throughout all the world, may persevere with steadfast faith in confessing your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for our most holy Father, Pope Francis, that our God and Lord, who chose him from the order of bishops, may keep him safe and unharmed. For the Lord's holy church to govern the holy people of God. Almighty ever living God, by whose decree all things are founded, look with favor on our prayers, and in your kindness protect the Pope chosen for us, that under him the Christian people, governed by you their Maker, may grow in merit by reason of their faith. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for our Bishop Bhutti, for all bishops, priests, and deacons of the Church, and for the whole of the faithful people.
Almighty, ever-living God, by whose Spirit the whole body of the Church is sanctified and governed, hear our humble prayer for your ministers, that by the gift of your grace all may serve you faithfully. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray also for catechumens, that our God and Lord may open wide the ears of their inmost hearts and unlock the gates of his mercy, that having received forgiveness of all their sins through the waters of rebirth, they too may be one with Christ Jesus our Lord. Almighty ever-living God, who make your church ever fruitful with new offspring, Increase the faith and understanding of catechumens, that reborn in the font of baptism, they may be added to the number of your adopted children. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for all our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ, that our God and Lord may be pleased as they live in the truth to gather them together and keep them in his one church. Almighty ever-living God, who gather what is scattered and keep together what you have gathered, look kindly on the flock of your Son, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in the bond of charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray also for the Jewish people, to whom the Lord our God spoke first, that he may grant them to advance in love of his name and in faithfulness to his covenant. Almighty ever-living God, who bestowed your promises on Abraham and his descendants, graciously hear the prayers of your church, that the people you first made your own may attain the fullness of redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those who do not believe in Christ, that enlightened by the Holy Spirit, they too may enter on the way of salvation. Almighty ever-living God, grant to those who do not confess Christ that by walking before you with a sincere heart, they may find the truth, and that we ourselves, being constant in mutual love and striving to understand more fully the mystery of your life, may be made more perfect witnesses to your love in the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray also for those who do not acknowledge God, that following what is right in sincerity of heart, they may find the way to God himself. Almighty ever-living God, who created all people to seek you always by desiring you and by finding you come to rest, grant we pray that despite every harmful obstacle, all may recognize the signs of your fatherly love and the witness of the good works done by those who believe in you, and so in gladness confess you the one true God and Father of our human race. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray also for those in public office that our God and Lord may direct their minds and hearts according to his will for the true peace and freedom of all. Almighty ever-living God, in whose hand lies every human heart and the rights of all people, look with favor, we pray, on those who govern with authority over us that throughout the whole world the prosperity of peoples, the assurance of peace and freedom of religion may through your gift be made secure. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
Let us pray, friends, to God the Father Almighty, that he may cleanse the world of all errors, banish disease, drive out hunger, unlock prisons, loosen fetters, granting to travelers safety, to pilgrims return, health to the sick, and salvation to the dying. Almighty ever-living God, comfort of mourners, strength of all who toil, may the prayers of those who cry out in any tribulation come before you, that all may rejoice because in their hour of need your mercy was at hand. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Behold the wood of the cross, on which hung the salvation of the world. Come, let us adore. Behold the wood of the cross, on which hung the salvation of the world. Come, let us adore. Behold, the wood of the cross, on which hung the salvation of the world. Come, let us adore. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who have restored us to life by the blessed death and resurrection of your Christ, preserve in us the work of your mercy, that by partaking of this mystery we may have a life unceasingly devoted to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow down for the blessing. May abundant blessing, O Lord, we pray, descend upon your people who have honored the death of your Son in the hope of their resurrection. May pardon come, comfort be given, faith increased, and everlasting redemption be made secure. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.